behind me, or beside me, I should say, uh, you'll see uh, several subject matter experts from the Unified Command who introduce themselves uh, momentarily. These individuals represent only a small fraction of the many dedicated professionals working around the clock on this complex response effort. We understand this is an extremely difficult time for the families of the missing crew members aboard the Titan, and our thoughts go out to them and the crew. The Unified Command team is working tirelessly to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in response to this complex operation. We remain in co close contact with the family members and the crew to ensure they are fully aware of our current and future search efforts. Additionally, we have been in close contact with the British and French Consulates General to ensure that they are fully appraised of our efforts and we are ensuring that their concerns are being addressed. We're incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that has been provided, including an expert submariner uh, from the Royal Navy here with us uh, serving aboard uh, as a critical member of our team. Additionally, a team of highly trained French ROV operators departed St. John's last night are en route to aid the search. Moreover, our Canadian partners have been providing critical leadership and significant response capabilities since the beginning of our efforts. Again, this is an incredibly complex search operation requiring both surface and subsurface elements, and our unified approach is critical. The location of the search, 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 400 miles southeast of St. John's, makes it exceptionally difficult to mobilize large amounts of equipment quickly. In spite of those challenges, we've been able to provide continuous air and surface search assets, as well as additional ROV capability to search below the surface. We currently have five surface assets searching for the Titan. We expect 10 total surface assets to search in the next 24 to 48 hours. There are two ROVs actively searching, and several more are en route and will arrive by tomorrow morning. We've received incredible support with aviation assets from our Coast Guard Air Station in Elizabeth City, the Air National Guard, and Canadian Armed Forces. Today there are two back-to-back -back P3 flights. Uh, one is ongoing now, as I speak, uh, totally 14 hours of continuous uh, on-scene coverage and two C-130 flights, uh, also one ongoing now, uh, throughout the day and into the evening. Yesterday, the Canadian P-3 detected underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Although the ROV searches have yielded negative results, they continue. Additionally, the data from the P-3 aircraft has been shared with our U.S. Navy experts for further analysis which will be considered in future search plans. The surface search is now approximately two times the size of Connecticut, and the subsurface search is up to two and a half miles deep, exponentially expanding the size of the search area. We also have to factor in the ever-changing weather conditions, currents, and sea states that expand the search area every hour. There is an enormous complexity associated with this case due to the location being so offshore, so far offshore, and the coordination between multiple agencies and nations. We greatly appreciate the outpouring of support and offers to provide additional equipment. The Unified Command continues to prioritize assets and resources in order to provide the best capability in the most timely manner. This includes weighing multiple factors to identify the most effective resources available to the response operation. With careful consideration to timeliness of equipment arriving on scene, usefulness and ability to deliver assets to the search area. Over the past 48 hours, we have, through incredible unity of effort, mobilized and implemented a tremendous amount of expertise and response capability. In addition to the ships and aircraft previously mentioned, we've dispatched two subject matter experts from U.S. Navy NAVC Subsalve, who will serve as search coordinators on scene for underwater search operations. So, I've been stressing uh, unity of effort a lot uh, in this statement, and that's because it is absolutely critical to this complex operation. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with the crew of the Titan and their loved ones. We will continue to work as hard and as quickly as possible in an effort to locate them. Uh, I will take a few questions, uh, Captain, but before yeah. I do that, I do want to, I'm gonna have uh, each of the members of the team here just introduce themselves, and then I'll go ahead and, uh, and take some questions. Good afternoon. 
I'm Paul Hankins. Uh, I'm the director for uh, salvage operations with the U.S. Navy's supervisor of South Hall. Hello, I'm Carl Hartsfield from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Commander Rich Cathoria. I'm an exchange officer currently serving on the staff of the Marine Good afternoon, Lieutenant Commander Christy Butler, working closely with Captain Frederick from RCC Boston. Search and Rescue Mission Coordinator. Thank you. Captain, what more can you tell us about the noises that were heard? Uh, can you give us any more detail? And just to follow up, from what you've gathered so far, uh, based on those noises, should that give the families and the the others who care for these people, should that give them some reason to hope? So a, a couple things. One, I think um, when you're in the middle of a search and rescue case, you always have hope. That's, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, with respect to the noises specifically, we don't know what they are, to be frank with you. Um, we, they, the P3 detected noises, that's why they're up there, that's why they're doing what they're doing, that's why they put sonar buoys in the water. Um, the good news is, what I can tell you is we're searching in the area where the noises were detected, and we'll continue to do so. And we, we hope um, that when we're able to get additional ROVs to be there in the morning, the intent will be to continue to search um, in those areas where the noises were detected, and if they're continuing to be detected, and then put additional ROVs down in the last known position where the search was originally taking place. Captain, well, the noise is still being noise detected, Captain. Regular 30 minute intervals as reported. I hadn't heard 30-minute uh, uh, intervals. So here's what I can tell you. We, so I, I am not a trained ear for underwater aquatics. Um, that's why we have a team of experts that are analyzing that data. That data was sent immediately to, uh, to the Navy uh, last night, and it was analyzed overnight. They're still looking at it, but I can tell you that it, it's, it's inconclusive. Uh, but again, I think the important piece is we're searching in the area where the noise are detected. Can you talk about the timeline? Can you talk about what timeline you're working on in conjunction with the teams that are there? It's a timeline of what we're spending. How much oxygen do they have left on the Oh, board? okay. Uh, so, well, in terms of, so we talked about the oxygen number. I think you're all tracking the oxygen number. I, I think there's an important point with that, though. The oxygen, that, that that's just one piece of data, right? There, there are a lot of pieces of data that we need to consider. And, you know, we're continuously looking at that and we'll continuously uh, you know, do that throughout the search. Um, but that's not the only thing that's important, right? And right now, our efforts are, are solely for focused on search. Um, that certainly is a dialogue that's happening, um, but uh, but we're focused on search. And this is a, a recovery or a rescue? Oh, this is a, this is a search and rescue mission, 100%. We are smack dab in the middle of search and rescue, and, uh, and uh, we'll continue to put every available asset that we have in an effort to define the Titan and the crew members. Captain, 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 um, and they, some additional ROVs that will be arriving tomorrow have uh, additional depth capability. Um, with respect to uh, an object, so yesterday one of the aircraft uh, did see an object. I, I will tell you this, in search and rescue missions, when aircraft are flying continuously, there is stuff out in the ocean that's floating. Um, we went back, we looked at it, 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 it wasn't, we, we didn't determine it to be debris, we don't think it's, it, it, it correlates with the case, and it is not uncommon at all during an active search to see things and then we go and look at them. So, so. Captain, I'm just apart from BBC News, when was the when were these noises first heard? How long did they persist for? And if I can also ask, do you have any information in terms of food and water that the men might have on board the sun? Yeah, so P so several P3 flights are, have heard the noises. Um, as yesterday, and we put uh, assets there. Uh, we, we relocated assets immediately. Uh, with respect to uh, food and water, it's my understanding there are some limited rations. I, I can't tell you exactly how much um, they have aboard, but they do have some limited rations aboard. Captain, uh, Captain. speaking to the families, how much hope can you give them after hearing those noises? Listen, you, I, I think you need to be careful. Um, we, we need to have hope, right? But, but I don't. I can't tell you what the noises are. But what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point, we're searching where the noises are, and that's all we can do with this. So is that your yeah, best? Is that your best clue right now about the status? 
of the submersible or those noises? And are the noises continuing now? If they stop, are they continuing? So I, I, so I just wanted to, so it was my understanding that the P3 had heard some noises today as well. But, so I do want to take just an opportunity to, uh, to invite uh, Carl uh, to the podium just to talk a little bit about, um, he has a little bit more expertise in, in underwater um, acoustics, maybe just to speak to that in general, because again, um, you know, th there are noises below the surface of the ocean. difficult to discern what the source of those no noises are at times, but I can tell you that this team has multiple sensors, they're in the area, they're sending data back expeditiously to the best in the world people to analyze that data, and then they're feeding the results of that analyst back to the unified team, and they're making decisions. So uh, Woods Hole is here in an advisory role, but uh, by our expertise, what I see is a very tight operational loop that's making decisions based on data and nothing is ruled out. Are the noises continuing? He said he heard a, the noises this morning. Are they still continuing on a regular basis now? There have been multiple reports of noises and every one of those noises is being analyzed, tracked, looked for patterns, and reported. Can you describe, what the noise, can you describe what the noise sounds like that they're hearing? Uh, well, you, you know, the noise is, again, very complex in the ocean. Uh, you have to be an acoustic analysis and you have to have context. They're trying to put all the pieces together. Uh, the noises have been described as banging noises. Uh, but again, they have to put the whole picture together in context and they have to eliminate uh, potential man-made sources other than the Titan. Is it possible that a ship in the ocean, is it possible a ship in the ocean or even uh, some mammals out there could mimic that kind of sound? So uh, I can tell you from my experience with acoustics that there are sounds uh, by biologics that sound man-made to the untrained ear, but I can assure you that the people listening uh, to these tapes uh, are trained. Uh, there are a lot of vessels in the area and they each make noise, right? So all of that has to be eliminated and it's analysis over time. Plus, as the captain said, it's we're, the team is searching in the right area so um, if you continue to analysis, do the analysis, look for uh, uh, different patterns and search in the right area, uh, you're, uh, you're doing uh, you know, the best you possibly can do with the best people on uh, the case. Who oh, well, 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 the best banging noise? Excuse me. A deep deep ocean salvage, salvage system that byway that was sent there to the location. Can you tell if it's, if it's on site yet? and how it operates and how long it would take for us to adapt to that take. Which, which uh, system? The flyaway. Yeah, What's the system that you're talking about? It's called the flyaway deep ocean salvage system. Is that just the hydraulic? Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's what I thought. So, so that, that's a piece of equipment, uh, it's a crane piece of equipment. Uh, there are a lot of pieces of equipment flowing in through St. John's right now. Um, one thing I did want to mention, I think it's important, um, some of the ROV capability that's arriving soon is, is, in, is, is really great, incredible uh, capability. One thing I want to point out is that French team that's coming in um, to serve aboard with their equipment aboard a French ship. Uh, they, they bring some state-of-the-art equipment. And um, so w once they get on, we're going to have more assets down to look, and uh, we'll continue to put them um, where we think uh, the best location is. But, but, but 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 considering how many days passed, are you still um, are you still optimistic that you're gonna find them all? So do you say how many days? Did you ask how many days or uh, okay. so, how many days? Well so we we have to remain optimistic and hopeful when you're in a search and rescue case. So we're in this. We're right in the middle of search and rescue case. So I, I don't, I don't want to get into a discussion about when that would end um, with respect to this case. What I will tell you, though, I'm happy to, to explain to you kind of how that process were to work. Um, it, you know, the Coast Guard prosecutes search and rescue cases on a, on a daily basis, and sometimes we don't find what we're looking for, and you have to, you have to carefully consider uh, all of the factors and. Um, there are a lot of factors you consider. And then after you consider all of those factors, 
sometimes you're you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision. We're not there yet, um, but if we continue to search, potentially we could be at that point. But again, we're not there yet, and um, that's a discussion that we will have uh, with the family long before um, I'm going to discuss that here publicly. Well, what what happens? 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 Happens?